watch it. Honestly, I could just look at this car and make sex noises all day. I absolutely adore the E30 series BMWs from the 1980s. These are the, uh, the three series, the smallest model BMW made at the time. And this is the classic boxy shape E30. I own one of these cars myself back in New Zealand uh, and I absolutely love it. They are very special to me and so I'm very, always very excited to get to drive an E30. And this one is a three 18 IS and I'll explain a little bit more about what that model is but first a little bit of background on the E30. So the E30 really in my mind saved BMW. These were so popular these cars in the 1980s. Everybody wanted one uh, and for good reason. They are a solid car. So here we are 30, 35 years later and these cars are still amazing to drive. There's a lot more character in one of these than there is in a brand new 3 Series for example. This is still something special and I'll tell you why. This, this car has the M42 engine, the uh, updated 1800 engine, which produces 135 horsepower, which was remarkable for the time. An 1800 four cylinder engine producing that much power. Keep in mind, 1980s cars did not produce a lot of horsepower. A five liter V8 in 1980 only produced 190, maybe 200 horsepower. So 135 horsepower was incredible. And it's a lot of fun to drive because, as I've said time and time again, drive a slow car fast is a lot more thrilling than a fast car slow. I mean, this engine rings out. It's got a double overhead cam. It likes to be revved and it gets all its power at the top of the revs. And it's always revving high because look, I'm in fifth gear right now. I'm in top gear and doing 4,000 RPM uh, just cruising at 80. <laughs> it has a very low gearbox. I'm always, I'm always reaching for another gear. So it is a lively engine, but it's not just that. This car is very light, 2,500 pounds. It's unheard of in the modern day with all the bits and pieces, uh, safety equipment we add. But yeah, this car's still got uh, an airbag on it. Only the late 80s and early 90s models had the airbag, plus ABS brakes. Of course, no airbags anywhere else and no other safety features, but they were pretty solidly built. And that shows because look at this car, 29 years old, and it's still a dream to drive. I take my hands off the wheels, it tracks perfectly to where I was steering. The gearbox is silky smooth. It is a joy to drive. And sounds pretty cool. So the story behind this car is that it's a viewer of mine who lives close to me, and he managed to buy this off an old man who's the only owner of this car. And he put 106,000 miles on it over the last 25 years, sorry, 29 years, which is what, about 3,500 miles uh, per year. So he didn't do a lot of miles in it, but he kept it in pretty good condition. You know, it's got a little bit of wear here and there, but overall, I am salivating about this car. I am, oh, I want to buy it for myself because, ah, it's as much fun as driving a Porsche. It really is. It sounds so cool and you have to drive it. You have to drive it. You have to put it through the gears to get any power out of it. And you know, doing 100 miles an hour in this car is a thrill, whereas 100 miles an hour in a, in a Porsche, whether it's a 911 or a, or a boring Macan like I've got, is eh, boring. So yeah, here I am doing 80. I'm gonna chop it down to fourth. Listen to that engine. So we pack up power oh, and back into top. Yeah, no overdrive on this car. Maybe because it was my childhood dream car. I, I, maybe I see them with a little bit of rose tinted glasses that maybe they're better than they are, but uh, I, I never bore of driving an E30. It's just a beautifully laid out. I love the boxy shape. I love how everything just falls to hand. And most of all, I just love how solid they feel for such a small car. You don't get thrills like this out of a modern small car. They all feel a little plasticky and rattly to me, whereas this thing, genuinely, ah, oh, <laughs> it's a thrill to drive, I love it. The man that owns this car's name is Wayne. I may just have to run Wayne over with his own car when I get back, just so I can steal it off him. 
Yeah, it's so funny to see because more and more you just don't see the E30 on the roads anymore. They were so common just 10 years ago. But these days people have either modified them and they fall apart. And you know, they're starting to get a little more expensive to keep on the road and people are just not willing to put the money into them. But every now and then you see one that's like this, that's in pretty mint condition. And well, for me at least, I have to go and salivate over it. And I notice even, you know, on BMW forums and stuff, you might see a row of BMWs and there might be one E30 there and everybody's just focused on the E30. Everybody loves an E30. I, I particularly think they are an amazing little machine. Okay, we're back at home. I thought we'd have a closer look around the inside. But first of all, if you're looking to buy an E30, you know, these are fun cars to drive and own. Um, and a lot of the work you can do yourself. There's so much uh, online material, how to fix everything in these cars. They're, they're a great project car. Uh, what you want to watch out for, of course, is body rust. Um, you know, around the sills under the wipers here uh, is a common place for rust. Obviously, around the wheel arches is rust. And even in the trunk, if you open up the trunk along the back edges, if the car's been parked on an angle, water accumulates and it rusts there. You also want to jump into the, pull the, all the lining off the, the, uh, the boot there, the trunk, and uh, have a look around for rust there as well. But if the car's clean, uh, you can't see any rust. Uh, inside, you want to look for cracks on the dash here. This is a very common area for cracks. This one's got a little bit here and just here. Uh, often they crack right across here. Uh, the, dash, the dashboard is quite hard to replace, but you can find dashboards that are in perfect condition. Uh, my E30 back in New Zealand had a crack in the dash, so I completely re replaced that and it looks brand new now. So you want to keep, if, if it's in good condition, either don't park it in the sun or put a cover over the uh, over, over this part of the dash um, so that, so that they, don't, they don't crack. But otherwise, you know, there's, uh, the parts are still completely readily available for these cars. Uh, there were so many of them around, you know, it's, it's easy to find parts and they're, they're a lot of fun to drive and a lot of fun to work on. But yeah, let's take a close look at this car. Um, this one's obviously a five-speed manual, as you saw when I was driving it. It's a really low ratio, so, you know, even the fifth gear, you're always revving, revving, revving. Obviously, they did that to get the most power out of it instead of economy, but still a very economical car. Uh, if we look from the uh, left to the right, these are the classic E30 door handles. We saw this in some other models as well. Uh, this is the uh, for the mirror. Now, interesting, this mirror needs replacing. See, the mirrors are cool because they've got this blue tint in it, but occasionally you see them start to wear out like that, and you can just replace the blue tint. You can buy, still buy that from BMW. Uh, down here, the lights, the, the lights are dimming. You can turn this to dim all the lights and the dash and, the, and, and even the radio dims and everything. Um, this is a US car, so it's only got one um, button here, but normally if you look carefully you can see there's a there's a second light there for a second button. My car has two buttons, so one's the left one's always for the uh, front fog light and the right one's for the rear fog light, but we don't have fog lights here in the US. And of course the classic dash. Now the dash is super cool. Uh, this one's a mile through hour, obviously a US car. Um, uh, this here was, uh, was unique at the time pretty much. Um, Mercedes had a similar sort of thing, but BMW really did a great job on, on having an economy gauge so it would show you that the needle would, would sort of swing based on how much fuel you're using. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was a cool feature at the time. And this, these little LEDs here, it looks like something you'd see on a stereo, uh, this is actually counting down to the next service interval. So as the green lights disappear, you have to service and they, they count down based on how many miles and time so if you just don't drive the car it still counts down uh, there's actually a rechargeable battery that sits in the dash which sometimes goes so if you're if you're buying an e30 a good idea the dash is pretty this console is actually pretty easy to get out you can get it out you can unsolder that battery and put a new one in so it doesn't wreck it um, but yeah this is this is all classic 80s bmw and this here uh, is normally the check light this car doesn't have this this is the, the base model of course but on the three 25 you have a you have a, a console up here with a switch that shows all of the stuff that it can check and when one of these lights is on that check light comes on uh, this car has got the airbag which was very rare for a e30 this is because this is a 91 it's got the airbag so it's a different steering wheel uh, and of course it's got um, some cool keys these are the keys that uh, that have the little light on them i remember that being a everyone going wow at the time on that um, and over here, 
the, the HVAC and the radio and the clock. Uh, once again, uh, earlier models had just an analog clock. The 91s had this digital clock, and if you had the 325, you've got a trip computer there, like in my car, which is, which is really cool. But yeah, I like the clock. It's nice and tidy. You've got a couple of spare holes here. This one, I don't think ever, they ever really put anything in here. Uh, this one was often used for um, balance for front to rear speakers if the stereo didn't cope with that. Um, and of course, rear demister and hazard lights. And this car's got a genuine BMW stereo, which is, oh, I want to steal the stereo, it's so cool. Um, yeah, really, and a, and, a, and a cooler, I think it's a Blaupunk, yes it is a Blaupunk, um, and it's cooler than normal. If you turn it on, hang on, I'm going to turn on this here, turn this on, the aerial on the back goes up, which is a classic BMW from the 80s thing. Most cars in the 80s had an aerial that came up the A pillar here. But BMW put the aerials in the back. It always looked a little phallic, that, that aerial going up. Super cool. I always wanted a car with an electric aerial on the back. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, this, this has got a tape deck. I've got the Rolling Stones. Put some Rolling Stones in. Um, and, and it's got a neat little feature as well. So if you're adjusting the bass or the treble or the, or the balance, you just run your finger along here. That must have been really something cool. And you get the little lights there. That is awesome. I won't play any of the music because I'll get a, I'll get told off by uh, YouTube, and then, uh, and then the manual HVAC controls. This car came optioned with um, the uh, the air conditioning, which is cool. Um, and of course, we also over here we've got the decent sized glove box. No airbag on that side. Uh, down here you've got the ashtray, cigarette lighter. And very few controls. If you if it's a four door car, you get the controls for the rear windows. And interestingly, none of them are automatic windows. You've got to hold the button all down for the window to go all the way down. And here's a uh, window cutout button. Uh, pretty pretty useless. Um, other than that, um, it's in great condition in this car. If you have a look at the seats, let me move my cameras out of the way. These are the sports seats. I uh, I salivate over these seats. They're really cool. They, uh, they fold forward nicely, the whole seat lifts forward, so it's easy to get access to the back. Um, they've got great bolstering, uh, and of course they've got good thigh support. They are uh, truly a wonderful seat from that, uh, from that age, uh, and it's very rare to see these in cloth. Most of them were in leather, and the leather, of course, you saw a, sort of a rib pattern on the leather. So if you're, if you're going to re-upholster, you try and copy the same colours and the same pattern so I wouldn't put leather in this car I'd put another a cloth in it if I was reupholstering this car um, and this car has got a unique feature you don't see this very often the armrest uh, it's very rare normally um, normally you, you just have this pocket down here or you have cassette holders down here as well uh, a non-electric handbrake is cool and up here we've got a manual sunroof now I guess this is because this is a low-end model, but honestly, um, the electric sunroofs cause so many problems, I'd have the manual any day, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, as, as you just saw, you roll it one way, and it just pops it back up. If you roll it the other way, it opens the whole sunroof like this. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. And mirrors, uh, nothing special there. So yeah, it's, it's a great, atmosphere i love the smell of these old cars and you know it's driving them is a thrill because they're so hard to go fast in. you know doing 80 or 90 miles an hour in this car is you're doing a workout and you know i just drove on the highway today which is a bit boring because this car really comes alive on the back roads that's when you really feel the difference between a three thousand three and a half thousand pound car and a two and a half thousand pound car like this and because it's so light, you can really throw it into the corners. It does still have body roll and everything, but because it's a light and predictable car, they did such a great job on, on giving feedback to the driver. You know, you feel the road conditions through the steering wheel and through the pedals, and you know when it's gonna let go. And that's the difference between, you know, an older car like this and a newer car. Newer cars, you're sort of cocooned away from the road experience, whereas these cars, you really get to feel it. So that's what really makes this car fun is it's, it's light and it's predictable, you know what it's going to do, and you really have to push it to get performance out of it. And that is, that is the real thrill of driving these cars, is, is having to you know, 
rev it out a bit and go through the gears to get to eke that last bit of performance out. On the outside, it's got the classic 80s um, bonnet, which opens backwards. And you see that wonderful M42 engine with a dub double overhead cam. You know, I, that's part of the joy of the E30 is how they look from the outside. This, this classic boxy shape. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just love the way they look. Uh, they're a very small car. They're a very small car, yet uh, they're a bit TARDIS-like. They're so small on the outside, but so roomy on the inside. Even the trunk has got more than enough room for two or three gorillas in it. Um, you know, it's, it's a remarkable engineering feat to have such a roomy car on the inside, yet it be such a small car. And everything, of course, feels so solid. When you open and close the doors, it's a solid thunk. So yes, I, I'd like to thank Wayne for bringing his car over today. A, a short drive, but uh, every moment with, with an E30 is a joy. If you, if you get the opportunity to drive one of these cars, do so. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, a magic time in, in, in BMW's past. You know, this was, this is when BMW, you drove a BMW off the lot and it was a very special occasion. These were very special cars back then. These days, everyone's got a BMW and they're a very mass market model car. Uh, in the 80s, they were a very special car and it was a thrill to own one. It was a thrill to drive one. And that still shines through today. You know, these old BMWs, are, they've got a really unique feel to them. Uh, obviously, they've got a unique style. But yeah, driving them is still still is an, an emotional treat for me, uh, as it sure it would be for you guys if you get to get the opportunity. Any old BMW is fun. Still today, I think still still a cool car to have. So I'm very jealous of Wayne and his E30 picking it up nice and cheap and being in such great condition. Yeah, I hope he uh, hope he does a little bit of work on it and keeps it. If not, uh, I'll be tempted to buy it off him. <laughs> I love this car so much. Anyway, uh, William and I. We'll see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching as always. Bye then. And if you're wondering where to acquire the ridiculous t-shirts that I wear in my videos, they're all here in my store, all your favorites, uh, including offensive stamps and my rapid dry towels as well. Yes, Nick Murray t-shirts, being a little inappropriate since 2016.